Hello everyone. In this session, we'll discuss about program interrupt. Now, interrupt basically interrupts are exactly similar to branch and save return address instruction. That means it is exactly similar to the subroutine call. But there are certain differences, or we can say there are certain points variations to this subroutine call. The number one to it is when the interrupt is usually initiated by means of internal or external signal. That means in the program we do not write instructions for this but they are generally initiated by some external signals so the first condition for interrupt is external or internal signals then second what we are having is the address of the service routine or service program is determined by the hardware that means we do not specify the address over here the address is specified by the hardware that is maybe it would be input or output device which specifies the address where the service routine is stored and the third is the interrupt procedure usually stores all the informations that is what we can say is that is uh, program status word that means the all the status pitch conditions then certain general purpose CPU registers onto the stack including the program counter that is written address it does not only store written address but it also stores CPU registers content as well as certain flag register that is what we call it to be status pitch conditions onto the stack so it may be stack it is not necessary it would be stack but there are certain memory locations depending on the processor because some processor uses stack some processor uses normal memory locations so this is how the interrupt are initiated based on this three variations to the subroutine call but when the interrupts are associated that means if interrupt has occurred so the program main program execution stops its execution and jumps to the interrupt service routine which we term it to be ISR so once the jump has occurred to ISR and the ISR has been executed it must return to the main program or and to the main program exactly where it has stopped that means what we say it to be the CPU must return exactly the same state that it was when the interrupt has occurred because it should not start its execution from the first so when interrupt has occurred it the main program execution is interrupted that means the main program execution is paused at that point and the interrupt service routine is executed which is also one kind of program but it may be some other program like IO program and the program is completed that means the service routine is executed it should come back to the exactly the same state where the interrupt has occurred it should not restart the main program so this is how the program interrupt is to be handled so for that, we, as I told you that there is a program status word. The status bit conditions which we had discussed in our previous session is same or we say it to be program status word. Because depending on the processor, this status bit changes. And this status bit conditions are nothing but, PSW is nothing but a register, separate register for the storing of the status bits. Now we are supposed to discuss types of interrupts. Now interrupts we are knowing in general the interrupt is initiated, ISR is executed, it returns back to the main program. Now the types of interrupts. The first we are having basically three types of interrupts, external interrupts, internal interrupts and software interrupts. Let us discuss them one by one. So external interrupts. The source of external interrupts are IO device. One of them is IO device, another is typing device, then the control circuits which monitors the controlling of the power supply and any other external source. Like for example, if we discuss then the IO device requesting transfer of data. That means we want to transfer the data from our keyboard input to the processor. So that is one interrupt and it is an external interrupt then IO device finished the data transfer then elapsed time of an event that means if some more time has passed for some event then also the interrupt may occur and the power failure so these are the external interrupts now these external interrupts are asynchronous because it do not works on clock 
so they are asynchronous they never works in synchronization with cpu and external interrupts depend on external conditions that are independent of the program being executed at a time that means the main program is getting executed but it has no concern with the interrupts because interrupt will occur at any time so the main program may be interrupted and the isr is executed for the corresponding interrupt so this is about external interrupt let's discuss the next type that is internal interrupts they are also sometimes termed as traps for us now they are generally executed the source of it internal interrupts are nothing but the erroneous use of instructions into the program that means somehow instruction is wrongly written or the operands provided to the instructions are wrongly provided for example the register overflow is occurring then it may cause internal interrupt same way we know that divide by 0 for any number is not possible so the thing is divide by 0 interrupt may occur same way we are having invalid operation code stack overflow protection violation all are the examples of internal interrupts and these error are general generally carried out based on the premature termination of the instruction that means sometimes it may happen that before a complete it may happen that sometimes the instructions do not get executed on time it may executed before time so this causes the interrupts and internal interrupts are generally synchronous because they are generated from the cpu itself so they are synchronous in with respect to cpu and the last type of interrupts what we are having is software interrupts now these software interrupts are sometimes also termed as built in interrupts and they are basically provided to the programmers and they are generally nothing but similar to our subroutine calls that means certain subroutines are written into the system and we can use as a programmer so they are basically used for converting our cpu user mode to cpu supervisor mode and we can perform certain types of operations like say for example we are doing some mouse programming then then in that case there are certain interrupts which are internally available which we you need to use it so they are basically provided to the programmers for the interruption to the main program and these are caused by to the certain instructions written so these are the software interrupts so there are in all three types one is external interrupts second is internal interrupts and third is software interrupts